The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's coaching session with your host, Craig Proctor. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about how to recruit, hire, and train. And uh, you may notice on your screen that I am on the uh, coaching website. And um, you don't have to go there now, um, but you can if you want to. Uh, you can have that up. Uh, I'm going to be doing a webinar. See, there's our webinar. But I'm also going to be bouncing back and forth between the coaching site. Um, sorry, not a webinar. I've got a PowerPoint up here. I'm going to be bouncing back between my PowerPoints and between all the resources that are on the coaching website. Okay, so I'm going to start off by showing you some of the resources that are on the, the coaching site uh, under this topic of how to recruit, hire, and train. And uh, then we're going to go through the PowerPoint presentation that I've created for this particular uh, session. And, um, you know, I'll show you how to link together. So this is information that you should read, okay, on your own time. I'm not going to do that here today. Uh, background, what is a rainmaker? the nine-step strategic process, the recruiting system, the hiring system. I'm going to go through most of this, in fact, uh, today, so you probably don't have to read it, but you can if you want. Um, the time of your life checklist, this is where we're asking you to write down what you do all day long and assign a value to it. We'll talk more about that. Uh, DISC test example, so you can download the DISC personality test right there and make your own copy, of course. You can order more of them. I'm often asked, you know, Craig, where do we get these? Well, if you take a look at the bottom right-hand corner, you can order as many as you want. I think they're a couple bucks a piece. So that's where you order them from. Uh, okay, organizational chart. If you're um, a solo agent, this is what your organizational chart is going to look like. Okay. If you have a team, your organizational chart for a larger team is going to look like this. Now, right now, if you're a solo agent, remember, you've got to write your name in all those boxes. Okay, so we'll cover this in more detail, but uh, while we're waiting for everyone else to join, just thought I'd give you a quick preview of everything that's here. Uh, then we're going to have a look at the recruitment ads. Well, we're going to talk today, how do you get great talent? How do you recruit? Um, how do you hire how do you train these people? So let's start with the ads that you're going to use for recruiting. Okay, they're all here. Okay, these are all the recruitment ads that I used. Okay, these are for licensed team members, and these are for unlicensed team members. Okay, and then there's the scripts. You'll notice that they drive to a hotline. See, they drive to a hotline here, so you're going to need the hotline scripts. So I've included all of the hotline scripts. And the reason you want to drive the, the prospects to the hotline scripts is the hotline script will do a lot of the sifting and sorting for you. So you can explain a lot about the opportunity right on the hotline script. People that are not interested will hang up and you don't care about those. People that are interested will be asked to send you fax in their resume or email you their resume and we'll explain the entire interviewing and hiring process here today. Okay, then we've got position contracts. Position contracts here for everybody on my team. So, you know, you, you can model after these. Of course, uh, your position contracts may be a little bit different, but it's better than starting from scratch, right? You can take a look at my position contracts for customer service manager, database manager, outside sales agents, okay, and if we have time, we'll go through those in more detail today. And then the overall uh, contract for all licensed agents is right here. I had my lawyer create this, and uh, this is the, the contract I'd recommend that you take to your lawyer. Your lawyer will probably want to change a few things. Why? Because they're a lawyer, and if they don't change a few things, well, it's hard to justify why they're charging you, right? So this is the actual contract for all my licensed agents. Again, if we have time, we'll go through that clause by clause. But I've got a lot to cover 
on this uh, particular webinar, so I'm uh, just sensitive that we might run out of time. So I just want to show you everything here, and then we'll get to as much of it as we possibly can. We're trying to condense 20 years of my real estate career on recruiting, hiring, and training down to a couple hours. Now, this is really, really important. Uh, my wife and I wrote this book. It actually is a book. It's a team system manual, but it is a book. Really, it's uh, everything uh, I know about uh, recruiting, hiring, and training team members. And you'll notice uh, that there's 110 pages here. Okay, so uh, it's in this format, so it's easy for you to print this off. I would print this off and I would read it. It is really, really good if I don't mind saying so myself. I'm biased, but it is really good. It's got a lot of great information. So today, what we're going to try to do is we're going to highlight what's in the book, what's in the team system manual. Um, one more thing before we go to the PowerPoint presentation. This is really cool, and I don't know if you're even aware that it exists, but let's say that you run an ad for a, an outside sales agent. Okay, you run an ad for an outside sales agent, and a couple of resumes come in. What you could do is you could email uh, all the prospective um, you know, people that you may want to hire, you may interview, uh, you could email them the, the DIST test. Okay, and they can do the DIST test before they even meet with you. So just click on Send New Test. I'm logged in as, as James McDonald, you can see here today. But you type in their name, their first name, their last name, their email address. You can do that right now if you want. You can send it to yourself. And you're going to see that they're going to get the test, and you're going to explain how they can use it. So that's pretty convenient. You can actually um, send any people that you're, you're considering hiring, anyone you're going to interview, the actual DISC task before you even invite them to come in and meet with you. Okay, so that's certainly an innovation. It's only uh, available to people in my coaching program, so um, just want to make sure that you're aware of that. So go in there and email that to yourself. Now, down here in the bottom left-hand corner, I've done a lot of work with Michael Gerber, who you know I think highly of, I talk a lot about. And uh, I did an interview many years ago with Michael Gerber. We actually had him on one of our coaching calls. And here's a seminar that Michael Gerber did in, in Montreal, Canada. He did this seminar in Montreal. And uh, I guess because he was in Canada, he talked a lot about me. Um, this is, a, what did I say, video? This is a, um, uh, it's audio. Uh, I think it was audio taped, not videotaped. So this is an audio of this seminar that he did in Montreal. Okay, and he talks about me and how I started, and the conversations I had with him. He talks about a lot of other people as well. But um, you want to listen to this. This is really, really good stuff. Um, I've listened to these over and over again. Um, I recommend that you do. If you haven't done that, you can download these. You can listen to them in your car. But this is really, really good stuff. Okay, so we're going to bounce back and forth between the coaching site and between the PowerPoint presentation that I've created here today. So as you know, I leverage myself in three different ways, right, with marketing, with technology, and with people. And that's what we're going to talk about here today is with, with people. And you probably come to the conclusion that there's, there's only so much you can do. You know, eventually we all run out of time, and that's why it's important for us to learn how to leverage ourselves. And now, first, you're going to leverage yourself with technology. Okay, that's that's the starting point. Is let's leverage ourselves with technology before we run out and we hire anybody. Let's make sure sure we're super efficient with technology. But eventually, even doing that, even creating these systems for yourself, even getting yourself super organized, even using all the latest technology. You know, you've got a contact management system. You've got the websites and the hotlines that are answering and sifting and sorting all the leads. Um, you know, you, you're doing everything you can to be efficient. But eventually, as your business grows, you're going to run out of time. Now, 
Some of us handle it this way. We just keep trading more and more of our time for money. But you can see what's wrong with that is, you know, you're working 60, 70 hours a week. You're giving up everything that's important in your life. And, um, you know, you just can't do it at some point. Even giving up everything that's important to you, you still run out of time. So leverage buys time. You can need time to implement all the ideas I give you here in the coaching program. And I hear that from members quite a bit. Say, so Craig, um, you know, I learn a lot, uh, but I don't have time to implement. I'm not getting things implemented. Uh, because you're busy being the technician. You're so busy doing what you do that you don't have time to implement any of, this, uh, any of these systems uh, so you can be more efficient. So you have to make a decision that you're going to start to work on your business, not just be consumed by working in your business. And if you can take some time away from being the technician and instead be the entrepreneur um, and implement some of what we're going to talk about here today, I promise you, your business will get better. And what do I mean by getting better? Well, hiring the right people at the right time, doing the right things, means two things will happen in your business. You'll make way more money and you'll work less. And you know, as you hire additional people, you'll make even more money and work less. And you hire additional people, you know, remember doing the right things. They've got to be the right people doing the right things, but you'll continue down that pathway of making more and doing less. You know, we've all heard that old saying, right? The more you make, the less you do. Well, done properly, yes. Okay, so you start with marketing. Okay, that's what we start you off with uh, at the super conference in the coaching program. We get calling. We get you out of chasing prospects. We show you the the science behind direct response marketing. Okay, we teach you how to reverse the prospecting process. So buyers and sellers are now chasing you. So no longer should you have to spend an enormous amount of time prospecting. Instead, you should be able to spend this newfound time, since you're not out there knocking on doors and cold calling, you should be able to invest that time on implementing these ideas, these concepts and methodologies that we teach you in the program. Okay, so the next step, of course, is technology, as I just mentioned. You don't run out and hire somebody before you become a super efficient solo agent. And then you're going to hire your first assistant. And we're going to talk today about, well, who should I hire? What should they do? Do I hire a licensed person first? Do I hire an unlicensed person first? Um, and maybe you've tried to hire people in the past. Maybe you've tried this whole team idea before and you failed at it. Okay, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means what you did doesn't work. Let's face it, there's way too much proof in the real estate business today that uh, this team concept uh, works and it is the way to go and the most successful realtors in North America implement a team. It's not going to go away. In fact, uh, you're going to see the solo agent possibly become its extinct as more and more teams are created. So this is not just about providing you a better income and uh, more time off and you know better customer service. It's about you survive, surviving in the real estate industry. But this is me back when I started in real estate. Many of you operate that way. <clears throat> it seems like the thing to do, right? Because everybody else in real estate seems to be operating that way. Uh, they're all, uh, you know, crazy too, busy doing it, working 60, 70 hours a week. They're exhausted. So uh, we, we believe when we get into the business and we look around at everyone else, that it's just, um, you know, the nature of the business. It's just the way it is. And I was, um, if not the first, one of the first agents in North America to have a team. I mean, nobody else was doing this in the 1980s that I know of, not in Canada anyway. So I, I looked around at other, uh, you know, professions outside of real estate, and they seemed to all work with a team. It made sense to me. 
So um, I guess the advantage I had coming in as a, a brand new agent uh, with you know no experience in sales or marketing is this whole concept made sense to me. See, some of the best ideas that I implemented into my real estate business came from outside of real estate. You know, and they do say that industries are reinvented from the outside, not the inside. I look around at the way other professionals operated, doctors, lawyers, and it just made total sense to me. Um, so, you know, here's a comparison. And this is a part of what I would use in my listing presentation. Um, you know, I used to be this one agent doing everything, trying my best to juggle all the balls, trying to give each one of my clients my undivided attention. But as you can see here, I was completely divided amongst all the tasks I had to perform. So, you know, you can hire me. This is me talking to a seller. You can hire me and my entire team for the same price is hiring a solo agent. Who do you think can provide you better service? Well, it just makes sense, right? And you might want to use some analogies uh, when you're talking to a seller. How does, your, uh, how does your doctor operate? Do they work by themselves? How does your lawyer operate? What about an airline pilot? Are they, uh, if you looked out the window and they were gassing up the plane or loading the luggage or sir 3,000 feet, you would be concerned. The pilot does what matters. The pilot focuses on the activities that change the outcome, and, and that's what we're asking you to do now as a real estate professional. See, I realized very early in my career that there's all of these things that need to be done. So how could you have time to do all of these things, and how could you possibly be good at all of this? And the answer is, is you can't. So what I want you focused on is, is this position here, being the rainmaker. If you want to make maximum dollars per hour, you've really got to carefully analyze how you're spending your time. You know, we, we talk about time management. Well, you can't manage time. All you can manage are your activities. And the real estate agents that I know that make the most amount of money are very, very particular on how they spend their time. They don't allow people to waste their time. So, you know, we come up with this whole concept of the rainmaker theory. Well, who is a rainmaker? What does a rainmaker do? A rainmaker does only what matters. A rainmaker is involved in only activities where he or she can change the outcome. But you know, somebody's got to be the office manager. Well, there's only you. You've got to write your name in there. You're also the buyer's agent, the telemarketer, the closing coordinator, the computer database person, the listing coordinator, the service coordinator. Now, you can hire people to take care of all of these activities for a way less than what you're worth per hour. You know, every time um, you run out the door, to take a picture of a house, to get a key cut, to deliver feature sheets, you're really saying, I'm worth, you know, 10 bucks an hour. And if you want to make the big bucks, you've got to draw a line in the sand, and you've got to insulate yourself from all of these things. And I know right now, you think you have to do these things. And that's the technician in us. The technician is consumed with being busy. Think about this. We're brought up by our parents through the school system, the education system, to be doers. Your parents would say, go clean your room. Go get busy in school. Study for a test. Take a test. Study for another test. Take a test. We are programmed, since we're children, to be doers. And what I'm asking you today to do is, is to become a thinker. The power is in thought. The power is in thinking about what needs to be done. Not out there doing it, doing it, and doing it. Okay, the power is in thought. And if you haven't read this book by now, I strongly recommend that you do. This book completely changed the way 
I thought about my real estate business, why most small businesses don't work and what to do about it. And Michael Gerber, um, you know, it's almost like you, you feel like he's talking to you. If you don't have time to read the book or you don't like to read, then just go back here to the coaching site and listen to my interview with Michael Gerber and listen to these audios, part one through four. They're very, very good. Okay? I recommend you do both. Read the book and listen to the audio. Hey, hey, heck, you're in your car all the time anyway. Instead of listening to talk radio, this is what the kind of stuff you should be listening to. The E-Myth, what does that stand for? The E-Myth stands for the entrepreneurial myth. What's Gerber talking about, the entrepreneurial myth? What's that mean? Well, he says that most people think that, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, people that go into businesses, they're, they're different, right? They're, they're entrepreneurs. He says it's not true. It's a myth that most people that go into businesses, in fact, are not entrepreneurs. They're simply technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. And the myth is this. You know, the guy that's a mechanic, because he's a good mechanic, figures I'm not going to work for this, well, why am I working for this guy? Wants to get rid of the boss, goes out and starts his own auto mechanic shop. Because the myth is, because he's good at the technical aspects of being an auto mechanic, the myth is that he knows how to run a business that works. And it's not true. The two are completely different things. So let's take a look at us as realtors. We're really good, right? At the technical aspects, you know what to do with buyers and sellers, you know what to say on the phone. We teach, we teach other to become better and better and better at it, but how many successful real estate agents, I mean successful on the outside, right? They're making lots of money, but they have no life. Uh, they may earn a lot, but they don't net anything. They're unhappy, they're unhealthy, they don't see their family, they're miserable, and eventually they burn out. Now, they might be able to do the sprint for a while. You folks can relate to that, right? Suck it up, work 50, 60, 70 hours a week. You do it for a year, you do it for two years, you say next year will be different, but it's not, and you keep doing it and doing it and doing it, and eventually you burn out. That's why 80% of real estate agents don't make it to their fifth anniversary. They can do the sprint, but they can't do the marathon. So the idea here is let's build something that works so well it makes your life better. Okay, let's design your business so the business serves you instead of you being a slave to it. You know, Gerber Joker, he talks about the fact that, uh, uh, as I mentioned, people, um, they're attracted to having their own business because they, they, they think, uh, you know, I'm going to have all this freedom. I'm going to get rid of the boss, and, and now I'm going to have all this freedom. And um, the first thing they lose is their freedom. The business that's supposed to serve them shuts out all the light in their life, and they don't know what to do about it. Some of you are living what we call this success trap. What's a success trap? Well, you're, you're successful. You make a couple hundred grand a year but you're not happy. You're working all the time. You don't like what you're doing. Now, you're afraid to change it up or drop what you're doing because the money's really, really good. I call this a success trap. You're successful, but you, you've sort of created this monster and you don't know how to get out from under it. Well, that's what we're gonna help you with here today. Success is not just about money. And, um, Let's face it, a lot of agents that make a lot of money keep very little of it. Look at what you're netting when this is all done. If you don't leverage yourself, you're not going to make the big bucks. You're going to work way too hard, and um, you're going to be tempted just to give up. But I want you to think about this. Please write this down. What is my option. What is my option? So as we start to talk about recruiting and hiring and trading your team, there'll be some bad days. 
there'll be a couple people you hire and it doesn't work out and the road will be bumpy. There'll be times where you think, the hell with this, fire everybody, I'm gonna go back to the old days, I'm gonna do it all by myself. You're gonna have days like that, you're gonna have thoughts like that. Some of you can relate to that right now. But I want you to think about this. What is my option? A little sign here right on my desk says, what is my option? And every time I had a bad day and I'm thinking, oh, this is just so tough to um, recruit and hire and train people and make it work, I thought, well, what's my option? I could go back and do everything by myself, right? Drive myself crazy, work 80 hours a week, die young. It's not an option. So we gotta figure this out. The good news for all of you is you really don't have to figure it out because I have and thousands of coaching members before you have, all you have to do is follow the plan that we lay out here for you. So Gerber says in his book, three personalities, the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. Unfortunately, most of us spend the majority of our time being the technician. 70% of the average person's makeup, he says, is being the technician. About 10%, about 20% is the manager. Only about 10% is the entrepreneur. Now, what we want to do is we want to flip that around. The money is not being the technician. Okay, the money is not being the doer. The money is in the thinking, in thought, the power of thought, thinking how to do a better job of what you do. So this is going to require a major paradigm shift. If you want to get to where I was in my business, it means you can't keep doing what you're doing, right? Now, to change what you do, can everyone follow me? To change what you do, you have to change the way you think, right? The thoughts come first, and then the actions follow. When you change how you think, everything else changes. So that's my job, is to help you change the way you think about work. What is acceptable to you today will not be acceptable to you in the near future. You can't go back and keep doing what you're doing. You can't think the thoughts that you're thinking right now. You need to start talking to people that you're not talking to right now. And that's why I always recommend that you come to our super conferences and that you participate on these calls so you can you can um, meet other real estate agents going through the exact same changes that you're going through. The support in our organization is incredible. We've got people that share like in no other organization because people shared with them when they started. I like this quote here. You're so busy doing what you do that you don't have time to learn what you don't know how to do. Isn't that the truth? You know, and, and uh, I'll hear that as an excuse that members use when they fail to come on all the training and coaching calls that we provide, or they fail to come to the super conferences that they're entitled to come to for free. They've already paid for this training. It's included in the coaching program. And they say, well, Craig, you don't understand. I'm too busy doing what I'm doing right now. I don't have time. So don't be guilty of being so busy doing what you're currently doing that you don't have time to learn what you don't know. You see, what you don't know is the opportunity. Okay, what you do know is the problem. Would everybody agree with that? We're so attached to what we do know that sometimes we're not open to what's staring us right in the face, the opportunities that, that surround us every single day. And <laughs> here's the deal. You look around at what everyone else is doing, and you say, I'm not doing too bad. I'm pretty good at what I do, and I'm going to agree with you. Some of you are pretty good at what you're doing. But it doesn't matter how much better you get at it. Getting better at what you're currently doing 
is only going to get you so far. So what do I mean by that? Um, well, you could become a little bit better with the universal callback script. You get a little better with your presentations. You could work some more hours, right? You could work seven days a week instead of six days a week. And, you know, you could maybe, maybe you'll sell 10% more homes, maybe 15%. That's not a quantum leap, though. That's not what we're talking about here today. And it all relies on you. It means you got better. So it all comes down on you. So we're going to talk about working on this thing, not just in it. And I know that's your fixation. Your fixation is, Craig, how can I become better at this? Can everyone agree that that's a problem? How can I become better? And I'm not saying that getting better at what you do isn't important. And I'm also suggesting some of you are already pretty damn good at what you do. But it's not going to get you to where we're talking about today. There's no quantum leap in that. Please write this down. Ten times more results in half the effort. Ten times more results in half the effort. You're not going to get there by simply becoming better. Okay, it, this is going to require leverage. So the advantage of becoming good at what you do is for this purpose. So you can show other people how to do what you do. That's the real leverage point. The reason I teach you to be really, really good at all of this, to be good at the universal callback script, so you can teach somebody eventually how they can be good at it. And now you can give some of those leads to this assistant. The reason I want you to be really good at the listing presentation and the buyer presentation, so eventually you can teach somebody else how to meet with buyers and sellers and get the same great results that you get. And once they get the same result that you can get, your job is done. You're free. Why? Because you no longer can change the outcome. Okay, so opportunity one is, yep, we teach you how to get better. You're going to be more efficient as a solo agent. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's only so far that's going to get you. You know, you might go from 30 homes to 50 homes or... 50 transactions, maybe to 100. I think I did, uh, I don't know, I think I did uh, close to 100 transactions by myself. Drove myself crazy. Made myself physically sick. It was not duplicatable. And then I hire an assistant, and I go well over 200 transactions and work less. And I hire another one, and I'm into the 300s. And, and um, you know, I was selling five to 600 homes every single year with a team of eight people. That's pretty efficient. I didn't have a team of 18 people. You see, I, I see these people that have a team of 25 people and they sell 100 homes. That doesn't impress me. That's not efficient. Uh, let's teach a bunch of agents how to do what we do. If you can sell 50 transactions, do for 50 transactions, you can teach somebody else how to do that. Now let's teach two people how to do that. Now let's teach four people how to do that. Gerber says if your business depends on you, you don't own a business, you have a job. Okay, so many of you have a job. It's not a business. Now, you think it's a business because you've got business cards. You say you're in the real estate business. But just be aware you don't have a business because a business is an entity that runs on its own. A business does not require your presence. Just like, you know, your house. It just is, right? It doesn't require you being in the house. The house just is, no matter where you are. Well, if you had a real business, the business would operate on its own. So that's your goal, is to slowly remove yourself from your business so eventually the thing runs without you, or at least partially without you. So you can shut the cell phone off, you can go to Hawaii with your spouse for two weeks and not worry about the thing. It's funny because many of our Platinum members say that when they go away on a vacation for two or three weeks, way on long vacations, take two, three weeks, go to Europe, 
I'm not suggesting, you know, they go away and never come back, but they go away for two or three weeks, thing off. They don't call uh, the cell phone off. They don't call into the office. They don't worry about it. They're truly on vacation. And when they come back, the amazing thing is, is the business did better without them. Not just as well, but did better. As long as I am my business, I don't own one. Okay, as long as I am my business, I don't own one. And you may be okay with having a job. But that's not the opportunity. The opportunity of this program is to really run a business. Uh, I want you to think about this, too. How much money, if you're with a franchise, how much money do you give every year to your franchise? And I want you to ask yourself, what am I getting in return? You see, the real definition of a franchise is a franchise is a proprietary way of doing things. When you buy a franchise or you're involved with a franchise, and most of you are, what they're supposed to provide you is a proprietary way of doing something. So, you know, if you bought a McDonald's franchise, they have proprietary systems, ways of doing everything. Does your franchise provide you a proprietary way of selling real estate? I don't think so. I think, um, you know, you pretty much do it the same as uh, all the other franchises. So what does a franchise in real estate really mean? It's a brand. It's a logo. It's colors. See, what we're offering you here with this program is we're offering you proprietary ways of doing things. Okay, I offer you my lead generation system. I have a very specific proprietary way of generating leads. It doesn't involve cold calling or door knocking or chasing prospects. Then I've given you my system for converting the leads. The script, here's what to do and say with the leads to qualify the lead and get us buyers and sellers to meet with you. Here's our follow-up processes. Here's our listing presentation system, our buyer presentation system. This is what you do once you have clients. This is what you do with past clients. This is our referral system. See, these are all duplicatable systems. You plug the system into the business, and what happens is the system works so you don't have to. All right, so you should have already done this at the super conference, right? What are you worth per hour? And we'll just whip back here to the coaching site here for a minute. You can see your time of your life. Let's just pop this open here. What did I ask you to do way back at the first super conference? I said, hey, guys, you know what would be great? It would be great if you would actually do this. It would be good if you actually went back home and you wrote down all day long what you do all day long. So, you know, I make feature sheets. Okay, so I spent an hour making feature sheets, but I could have hired somebody for $10 an hour. Okay, then what did I do? Well, then I pulled info off MLS. Okay, then what did you do? Well, then I took pictures. Now, I, you know, I may be exaggerating. Maybe you don't do all these things. But I'd like you to write down what you do all day long, and then you're going to sign MLS, okay? Do I need to pull off uh, the hot list? Uh, you know, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's $12 an hour there. Uh, took pictures. Hmm, maybe 8 bucks an hour there. But you write down what you do all day long. Okay, now up here in this box, I want you to figure out what you're worth per hour. So let's say, uh, and I know I've done this for you, but we'll do it again anyway. Uh, Realtor makes 100 grand a year. We're talking gross, not net, because the net usually is gross. But we'll talk about the gross. Realtor makes 100 grand in a year in gross commissions. And let's say they work um, 50 hours, or sorry, they work 40 hours a week. Reasonable, right? 40 hours a week. I think they call that bankers' hours. 40 hours a week times 50 weeks a year. They take two weeks for vacation, so 50 weeks per year. 40. Uh, 40 hours a week times 50 weeks would equal 
2,000 hours. Okay, so the realtor is trading 2,000 hours, okay, for the $100,000. Okay, so $100,000 divided by 2,000 hours, realtor's worth 50 bucks an hour. If you're worth $50 an hour, should you be doing that? Should you be doing that? Should you be doing No. You can't afford to keep doing the things that you're doing. Now, there's other things here that are rainmaker activities. Okay, so um, uh, how about listing presentation? That's a rainmaker activity. What's that worth? Maybe that's worth $2,000 an hour. So I want you to write down what you do all day long, and I want you to isolate all the stuff you shouldn't be doing because you can't afford to do it. And I hear the opposite. I can't afford to hire an assistant. You can't afford to hire an assistant. Okay, I want you to think about it in different terms. I remember when I started in the business, I remember coming home exhausted and my family would say, well, did you sell anything? Nope. Well, why are you exhausted? What have you been doing? You've been out of the house. You left at 8 o'clock this morning. It's 8 o'clock at night. You've been out for 12 hours. You didn't sell anything. What would you do all day long? And I had to really think about that. I was exhausted. I truly was. I was busy. I was, you know, in my mind working very hard, but I didn't produce any results. Now, a couple of years later, here's what happens. I work one hour the whole day, and I list a home and make a $15,000 commission check, and I worked one hour. Because everything else was being done for me what was more productive okay and working an hour a day that's duplicatable working an hour a day to make 15 grand can we all agree that's duplicatable working 12 hours a day to make nothing is not duplicatable so I'd like you to do this exercise complete this exercise if you haven't already done so so what are you worth per hour are we worth 100 bucks an hour, 200 bucks an hour, 300 dollars an hour? Once you figure that out, uh, you know that, you know, may help you make a paradigm shift. You can't afford to be doing some of the stuff that you're doing, but you're going to analyze what is it that you do all day. Now, there's an order to delegation. The first thing I'd like you to delegate is anything that doesn't require a real estate license. Okay, get rid of it. So, what did my first assistant do? Um, Everything, everything that didn't require a license, including uh, taking my dry cleaning in, driving my car through the car wash, uh, all my paperwork, all my banking, everything. So make a list of everything that needs to be done. You, of course, you should make the list before you hire the assistant. Okay, don't do it backwards, right? Many of us make that mistake. We hire the assistant, and then we spend the rest of our life trying to get him or her to do what we want them to do. Don't do that. That's why we create these job descriptions, you see. Let's go over to the job descriptions here. Uh, where am I here? Boom. We'll go back here. Uh, position contracts. Job description, same deal. Okay? So let's pop this open. Let's have a look at some of these. We're going to... You know, now this is me dividing my business up into many positions, okay? So uh, call coordinator, answer incoming calls, database manager will also assist you with phones, uh, a caller asks for a team member by name. So everything is written out here. Now, these are many different positions that all need to be combined into one when you hire your first assistant. You follow me? Because you're only going to have one person. You're not going to have, you're not, we're not asking you to run out and hire two or three or whatever. You're going to hire one admin person, and it's real easy at that point, right? If it requires a real estate license, that's you. You're doing that. If it doesn't require a real estate license, it goes to, it goes to your admin person. This next person you're going to hire is a buyer agent. You're going to throw off all the unlicensed duties to the admin person. You're going to throw the buyers to the buyer agent, and you're going to hog the listings. 
Why? Because you've got better leverage with listings. When you have listings, everyone on MLS is working for you. Now, let me say this. When I, when I threw off the buyers to my first assistant, if it was a buy first client, somebody that uh, wanted to buy a home first, um, I would give that buyer to my assistant, Lindy, and Lindy would show them houses, and once they found the house that they wanted to buy uh, and they were ready to list their home, I would hog the listing. I would pull the listing away from her, and that was clear to her from the onset. Okay, and you may want to So anything to do with listings, I hogged all the listings. After a while, though, I realized, well, that was kind of silly. With these buy first clients that I give to Lindy and she runs them all over town and she finally finds them a home and they're ready to list their home, um, you know, Lindy was getting the same result. Like, she was very good with converting the buyers. Uh, I already had enough listings to work on. I decided, well, let's, let's try Lindy out on listings. Heck, she's already got a relationship with these buyers. She's been working with them for weeks or months. She's gained their trust. She's sold them a home. Why don't I just have her carry on and list the home as well? So I taught her my listing presentation. And then as she proved herself, I started giving her listings, even people that weren't buying first, even for people that weren't buying at all. Again, you're going to do this slowly over time. But start by delegating the buyers. You hog the listings. And then eventually, we get down here to step number four, um, you can teach other agents how to do how to work with sellers. You can teach them the listing presentation. Teach them how to be as good as you are. Remember, once they're as good as you are, what's the rainmaker theory say? Get out of there. You can't change the outcome anymore. Now, I did also delegate the offer negotiations. Now, this will really stretch your paradigm because many of you will think, well, there's no way that I could do this. So let me explain what I did. And I'm just preparing you. You're going to reject this idea. But I'm just saying it's the truth. You can ask anyone here in my marketplace. Uh, when I listed a house and the offer came in, I didn't negotiate the offer. Okay, the seller saw me at best only at the time I listed the property. But in many cases, not at all because I sent some, one of my other agents. Now, let's say that I showed up for the listing appointment because I, I would cherry pick the best appointments. And you should do that too. You're not just going to start off by delegating all the buyers and sellers. Maybe you want to cherry pick the best buyers and the best sellers and hand off the rest. Heck, it's your, it's your business, right? You've got the, it's your prerogative. You've got the right to do that. But eventually you'll get to the point where um, you, know, you don't need to go work with any buyers or sellers. I, mean, I got to the point where if it was my relative, my uncle, my aunt, I would delegate it out. If my aunt called saying, I want to list my house. Okay, because I couldn't change the outcome. I couldn't afford, I couldn't, I can't afford to be involved in activities where I can't change the outcome. Think of a, I want you to think of the concept of opportunity cost. Whenever you're doing something, it means you're not doing something else. Okay, so when you're out listing a house, it means you're not working on marketing, perhaps, that could cause you to list 50 houses. So there's opportunity cost. We've got to be very careful on how we invest our time. So at the listing presentation, I would explain to the seller that one of the benefits of listing with me is when an offer comes in, you're going to um, have access to my professional negotiator. And they're really good at this. Is all they do all day long. They negotiate the contracts for my clients, for buyers and sellers. And indeed, when an offer came in, my professional negotiator would go in and handle all the contract negotiations. The only time I would get involved is if I had to change the outcome. And I, I know many of you are saying, well, this is a uh, great idea, but um, not for me, because my sellers would never go for that. Well, that's exactly what I used to think. I didn't think that the buyers would not working with me. I didn't think that the sellers would accept having one of my team members show up and, and take care of them versus me. Um, now, the last thing here, notice, that I delegate is the follow-up calls. Okay, everybody see that this is the last thing 
that we delegate. Not the first thing. Okay? Here's what most of you do. You, you take that up here, follow-up calls. Okay? You delegate that first. But that's not what you want to do. Okay? That's the last thing you delegate. Because you can make more money on the phone making the calls than going out on the appointments. Does everybody get that? This is such a hard paradigm to break through. I want you to really think about this. Remember, this was my business, and I could choose to spend my time however I wanted. I could choose, I, I could choose to spend my time doing all the admin duties. But you all buy into that in a heartbeat, don't you? Well, you'd say, Craig, well, that would be dumb. I could have spent my time with the buyers. I could have spent my time out there negotiating offers. But you know the truth. It doesn't really change the outcome in most cases, right? They either accept it, they don't accept it, they sign it back, and the buyer either uh, ponies up, the seller comes down. But not often can you change the outcome. Um, I could spend all my time doing listings. And that makes sense to all of you, right? Yeah, listings, that's where I should be spending my time. But even more important than spending your time going out getting listings is the follow-up calls. You see, in an hour on the phone, I could set up four or five listing appointments. Now, in an hour, I can't list four or five homes. Hell, I'm lucky to list one home in an hour. So if I'm making my callbacks, I'm calling back my new leads, let's say tonight between 9 p.m., in that two-hour period, I might be able to set up eight or nine appointments. Well, there's no way that I could list eight or nine homes. Now, I know some of you might be saying, but Craig, when you hand the listings out, you're only getting half the commission. If I split the commissions 50-50 with my outside sales agents, uh, you're right. But let's say I set up eight appointments tonight between seven and nine. I set up eight listing appointments. And I'm giving away 50%. Well, that would be like me. I'd have to go out and list four homes in that two-hour period to make the same amount of money. Well, there's no way I can list four homes in two hours. So just be convinced that this is the last thing you want to give up. Now, it got to the point where I couldn't make up all the, I couldn't make all the fault calls. Too many leads coming in. Well, um, you know, what am I going to do now? Well, one choice was I could stop running all the ads. Right? How many of us get frustrated? You get all these leads. You're not, you don't have time following them up. And I, I understand your life because I've lived it. Here's what's happening right now. See if I'm describing this correctly. Okay? The person doing the calling, you, is also doing the doing. You've heard me say that before, right? So here you are, you're disciplined, you're calling back the leads, and you're good at it. You're using the universal callback script, you're pretty good at it, and you're, now you're making appointments. So you book a buyer appointment, you book a listing appointment, maybe you're giving away the buyer appointments, but you're going out on the listing appointments yourself. So now you're out in all these listing appointments, because you're good at making the follow-up calls, you're out in all these listing appointments, but because you're out in all these listing appointments, guess what happens? The leads don't get called. You fall behind. And I'm just saying, that's what's going to happen. It's the natural progression. The person doing the calling is also doing the doing. The, the better you get at lead generation and the better you get at actually following up with the leads, you're going to book so many appointments that at some point you won't be able to call back the leads. And that's pretty frustrating, right? Because you finally get around to calling back the leads. They're like two weeks old now. And the seller says to you, oh, it's too bad you didn't call me yesterday because I just listed my house. So at some point, you're going to be forced to delegate more of the listings. Or you can make the mistake of delegating the follow-up calls. So many of you make that mistake, right? You do this. You delegate the follow-up calls because you see yourself as too important, too valuable to make the follow-up calls because you want to go out and you want to work on these listings. Okay, that's where that's where you want to spend your time. So you delegate all of this. Well, what's the problem here? The person that you've delegated this to is not as good as you, and what they convince you of 
is that the leads are no good. Even though there's dozens or hundreds of them, which seems odd to you, because when you were calling them, they were good, but they tell you they're no good. Now, that's why I really like the idea of you making the follow-up calls, and this is the last thing that you delegate, because you now can lead by example. When you hire an inside sales agent to help you follow up the leads, they can't BS you, because you know what's possible, because you two are making the calls. So the transition is this. You're going to start by, because there's only you, right? You're going to be making the phone calls, and you're going to be going out and getting the listings. It's easier for you at some point to hire agents to go out and get the listings to hire somebody to, make, to help you make the follow-up calls. Just saying, that's the truth. This is the hardest position to recruit for right here because nobody wants to do it. It's easy to hire for this position, right? You run a couple ads, you call a few agents around town. Uh, imagine uh, calling a couple agents around town saying, Hey, George, um, hey, look, it's Craig over here. Look, I've got this real problem. I've got all of these sellers that want to list their home, and I just don't have time to, to handle all the business. Would you like to come over here, work with me, and uh, let's say we could split the commissions 50-50. This position, real easy. Also easy to hire for that position. This one, not so much. So it's the hardest position to recruit for. And you already possibly know that because you've tried. Now, here's the other problem. If you're not really good with the follow-up calls, how are you going to teach this new person to do this? How are you going to teach somebody to be good and not good at? So my advice is you've got to suck it up here, folks. You've got to be really good at this. You've got to lead by example. This is the last thing you're going to delegate. And it's easier to delegate one through four, and you spend most of your time here. Okay, very few agents get this, but I'm just saying that's how it worked. Right to the end of my career, I made the bulk, I did the bulk of the heavy lifting because I could make more money in that activity than I could anywhere else in my business, and so will you. So hopefully everybody gets that. Ah, the pathway to freedom is not becoming an expert at what you do. Hmm. What does that mean? The pathway to freedom is becoming an expert at what you don't do. Think about that. Man wearing that hat around the office. Imagine thinking all day long about how to not do things. What did I say earlier in the webinar? We're brought up to be doers, right? Go clean your room in school. Study for a test, take a test, study for another test, take a test. Um, we are brought up, programmed to be doers, to be busy doing, 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 doing. So you get into the business and you're, you're busy and you're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it. And I want you to think about how to not do stuff. Become an expert at figuring out how to not do things. If you weren't so busy doing things, you'd have more time to think about things. Okay, Again, the power is in thought. The power is in how you think about the work that needs to be done. So here we are, an hour into the webinar. How to recruit, hire, train, and manage your people. The first thing that most agents do when they realize they need some help in the form of an assistant is to hire somebody. Anybody to take the pressure off. Are you guilty of that? You're exhausted, you're desperate, I just need some help, and you just hire the first person that comes along. Don't do that. Hiring the person is the last thing to do. The first thing you're going to do is, and you've done this, you've all done this, and if not, you can go back to uh, the coaching site and you can take the test again. Okay? Let's go back to the coaching site, and boom, where's the test? Right here. You can email it to yourself, send new tests, boom, put in your name. You can email it to yourself. You can email it to anyone you want to hire. It's that easy. Okay, if you want to understand the test once you score the test, uh, what do we got here? Um, someone here, test exam, oh, profiles right here. Check this out. This will tell you all about the test. 
Okay, you score the test. You've all done this, right? But here it is, high D personality. <clears throat> Let's go down to 100% here. Okay, high D, high I, high S, high C tells you everything about this, but we I won't bore you with all that. You can read that later. But you're going to take the test. Okay, that's step number one. Step number two, define your rainmaker role. Okay, understanding what you can change the outcome of. Okay, so I get you to write down what you do all day long. Okay, we get you to determine what you're worth per hour. We've done that today. And then you're going to isolate all the stuff that you're currently doing that you no longer should be doing. Why? Because it's 8 to $10 an hour stuff. You, it's not rainmaker activities. You're going to create the organizational chart. Okay, organizational chart. That's the, the wheel, right? Okay, remember the wheel that we, we looked at? You're, you're going to create that. You're going to define the positions on your organizational chart. So let's just go back to the coaching side here. Okay, organizational chart for a team. Okay, your solo agent. Let's say your solo agent. Uh, yours is real simple. Solo agent. Here's your organizational chart. You're the rainmaker, and you're going to hire one unlicensed per unlicensed person, one unlicensed assistant, and they're going to do all this stuff for you because there's only one person. They're going to be the manager of the office. Call coordinator means they're going to answer the phone. They're going to be the courier, take the pictures, key boxes, feature sheets, and they're going to manage your database. What are you going to do? You're the outside sales agent. You're the inside sales agent. It means you're calling back all the leads, and you're servicing all the customers. So small team means there's you and one unlicensed assistant. Okay, this is what the unlicensed assistant's going to do. This is what you're going to do. Now keep in mind, I've got all of these. You read the team system manual. What did I say? 110 pages there. Okay, all my position contracts are here. Uh, hopefully, we'll get time to, to go through the, the contract. Hopefully, we'll have time to take some questions here. But everything's right here. Okay, so you're going to uh, create the position first. Does that make sense? You don't hire the person and then chase them around trying to get them to do what you want them to do. That's chaos. If you hire the person before you design the position, if you make that mistake, you have a business that's people dependent, not position dependent. Some of you may have an assistant like that right now. Her name's Mary, and you have no idea what Mary does, and you sure hope she never leaves you. Well, what happens if Mary says, um, you know, I am leaving, or I want to raise? Okay, um, you, you know, um, how many of you have people that work for you that refuse to do things that you want them to do? So you've done this backwards. You design the position first. You, you create this, these position contracts that I just showed you, and you get them to sign off on the position contract, acknowledging that they're going to take responsibility, that they're willing and able to do all the things that you're asking them to do. You design the position first. You don't hire the person and then try to fit your business around the person. As your business grows, you're going to hire people to fill the positions. You start off with one person, then you hire another one on your own time frame. Remember what I said earlier, you're going to hire the right people at the right time, doing the right things. Now, some of you might be totally happy with just hiring one administrative person. And uh, you know it, it helps you take your business from transactions to 50 transactions and you're working less and you're making more money and you're totally happy with that. There's going to be others that uh, you know want to shoot for the moon and um, you want to you know totally remove yourself eventually and sell hundreds and hundreds of homes. Well, we can help everybody reach their goals. I understand not everyone in this program has aspirations to make millions of dollars. But when you find out how easy this is, you might change your mind. Okay, so now you've created this position contract. Detailed description of each position. When you hire your second assistant, you're going to build in cross-training. If one of them leaves you, they become sick or whatever, well, guess what? You'll have someone that can fill in. It's better than being held hostage, right? 
And trust me on this, it becomes easier as you hire additional people because you become better at it. You become better at hiring, you become better at training them. It's easier. Number seven, decide which order you're going to fill the positions in. Okay, consider the needs of your business. So I'm suggesting a min person first, then a buyer's agent. And then execute the plan. Like all these acronyms, we did this at the conference. How do you find good people? Well, you need to advertise for them. That's how you're going to find good people. Okay, so let's have a look at, um, I don't know what happened there by advertising. Uh, here's one of the ads. Okay. How to make a good living selling real estate without ever prospecting again. Um, this is probably similar to what you responded to. This is why you're in the program, right? Well, if you ran an ad like this, do you think there might be other licensed agents in your area that are also sick of cold calling and door knocking? Think of how easy it is to recruit licensed agents when you control the leads, right? You're generating all these leads. And if you're not bringing rid of leads, then don't do this, right? Don't hire an assistant. You don't need an assistant. Everybody gets that, right? Like I'm not suggesting everyone run out and hire an assistant. If you don't have enough leads, enough business to keep you busy, well, obviously you're not going to run out and hire a licensed agent. I'm talking to those of you that um, are having trouble keeping up. You're generating enough business that you, um, you are not getting back to people. You're wasting leads. You know who you are. You're wasting leads. By the time you call them back, off sold through someone else, you're not reaching people. You need some help. So how easy is this? Hey, George, uh, Craig Proctor here with, uh, with Remax. I, you responded to my ad, and I uh, want to tell you a little bit about the position. In fact, um, you'll notice here, as I mentioned earlier, there's an 800 number with this script. You're going to model after that script, and you don't even have to talk to these people initially because agents in your area that are interested in this position will call the 800 number, listen to the four or five minute script that you've recorded, and decide whether they're into this or they're not. If they're not interested, they hang up. Good. You don't have to waste your time with them. And you also don't have to waste four or five minutes with every candidate explaining the same old spiel over and over and over again. Let the robot do that. Let the hotline. Describe the position. At the end of it, people that are interested are told to fax or email their resume to you. Those are the people that you're going to be interested in. So you're going to review the resumes that are faxed or emailed to you. You're going to select out of those which candidates you want to be you, you're interested in, and you bring them all in at once for a group interview. My assistant calls them. They don't know they're coming in for a group interview. They all get there. Surprise, group interview. Put them all in the boardroom. I walk in. My, my, administra my administrative person gives them the personality test. Um, you could you know, set them up to have that test done, as I, I mentioned a few minutes ago. You can email to them ahead of time. She uh, scores the test. I walk in. I present my vision of um, you know, what this opportunity is, is all about, what it's like. Um, um, you know, Try to be really... Um, Blunt at this point. Yeah, I'm not trying to sugarcoat the position like I used to. I'd be so desperate. I used to be so desperate to hire people. I'd make the job sound too good, right? Um, well, I might have eight or ten people in my boardroom. I'm only looking at hiring one, so I'm going to be very candid, very blunt. Tell them uh, what the opportunity is all about, what I expect of them, them in return. Uh, they're going to fill out a little. Um, uh, they're going to fill out a form on the way out that indicates whether, uh, b based on what they've heard, whether they want to be considered for the interview or not. And all of these forms, by the way, uh, you're going to find them over here. You're going to find them right here in the team system manual. I don't know what page it's on probably is an index, but uh, we've, we're giving you everything here you need. Let's see if I can find that, for example, here. Probably can't. I looked at it last night, and it's there. Let's just see if we quickly go through this. Putting quite a bit of pressure on myself right now. Uh, let's see. There's the contract.
tracks. There's the ads. There's the scripts. Uh, these are, are good too. These are um, weekly uh, performance charts that you folks can knock off. Okay, I've obviously passed it here. Uh, let's see if we can find this. You guys don't mind while I talk to myself. Okay. That's management. Okay, I think we're coming up to it here. Right here. Interview acknowledgement. Uh, I wish to be considered for the next stage of this interview. They check off yes or no. And if they check off no, we ask them a few more questions. I do not wish to proceed further. Well, we want to find out you know, why. Please indicate why. The duties and responsibilities position as described are somewhat different than I anticipated. I'm overqualified, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, who are we going to pay attention to? Okay, we're going to pay attention to the people that checked off yes. Okay, then we can bring those people back for a private second interview. Okay, I review the personality test of the candidates who, yes, did express an interest in going to the next stage, choose the ones we're most interested in, and boom, they come in for individual interviews, and hopefully I hire one. I make an offer of employment. Okay, so that's a system that all of you can duplicate. Now, these are the personality types that you're looking for. I want to hire an admin person. I want an S or C personality. However, if I'm hiring, um, you know, um, a buyer's agent or a listing agent. I want someone with high I uh, plus lots of D. I want some D there because if they just have I, they may not have enough D to close. Uh, training. Look at this should be easy for you to train them because you're already good at these things, right? So they're just going to follow you around, shadow program, right? Administrative stuff. You're already doing it now. You just show them how you do what you do. Uh, when you hire buyers, they follow you around and they listen to you as you speak to and work with buyers. Same thing with um, when you hire somebody to help you with listings. It's a shadow program. They follow you around. They listen to what you say and what you do. They watch very carefully for a couple weeks and then you follow them around for a couple weeks to make sure they've got it. And once they've got it, you're free. I like this here. Uh, time spent, oops, what did I do there? Uh, time spent training the first time around is time well invested in your future. They don't think, I don't have time to train. This is, this is the ball game here. You see, there's no leverage in hiring people that fail and then going out again and, and running ads and hiring them and uh, spending kind of, you know, training them halfway and then it doesn't work out and people stay for six months or a year or two. There's no leverage in that. Look at my team. My people stayed forever. They're still there now, some of them. Carol's still there. Kelvin's still there. The people that were on my team are still there today. I mean, we're talking 18, 20 years later. They're still doing it, exactly what I trained them to do. So that's the leverage is finding good people and keeping them so they stay. So you're going to create a training manual. You're going to do weekly team meeting meetings with them. Every Monday, I did a team meeting. Every Monday morning, um, you know, you've got to constantly be teaching them uh, the, the system and refining it. Okay, or they'll forget. The, the meeting should be fun. Okay, we talk about all their new listings, our buyers, and I, I um, reiterate a different aspect of this system. Every single meeting, we might talk about the listing presentation, one meeting, the buyer presentation, the universal follow-up script. Um, we were going to look at some of the customer surveys that came in. Uh, here's some people that love this. What did we do right here? Here's some people that weren't happy. What did we do wrong? Why? So we can fix our system, make tweaks to it, so we have more happy or um, not happy. Uh, what do we want? We want people that are ecstatic, thrilled with our service. Okay, how it, when we have people that are thrilled, I call this extreme praise. When we have these people that are extremely happy, we do an autopsy during these meetings to find out why does this person love us so much? 
so we can duplicate it. Let's figure out what we did that was so right here and figure out how we can duplicate it over and over and over again. And when we've got somebody that wasn't so happy with us, let's figure out what we did wrong here so it never happens again. A mistake is only a mistake if you don't learn from it. And then finally, the role of manager need not be time consuming. And we talked about management by exception. So the, the, the uh, position contract, remember, we're going to write out everything that this person is going to do for us. At the bottom of the position contract, I want you to write in there that if there's anything that you're unable or unwilling to do, uh, you're going to report that in the form of an exception report. That way you're only stepping in and dealing with the exceptions. You've got to empower your people. You've got to believe these people are good people and they're, they're going to do a good job. And you've really got to truly delegate responsibility. You can't abdicate responsibility. How many of you are guilty of this? You delegate the work, but you don't really ever delegate it because now that you've hired this new person, you're doing all the stuff that you're doing, plus you're spending an enormous amount of time looking over their shoulder. Empower them. Yes, they're going to screw up. They're going to drop the ball. They're going to make mistakes, but that's how they learn. If you're not willing, go back to the sign on the wall here that says, what is my option? What's your option? Yeah, you can continue to be a control freak and keep doing what you're doing, growing older. Or you can be willing to set your people free, give them the responsibility, really truly delegate these activities, and manage by exception. So you're only managing what they're not able to do. So they simply fill in the nature of the exception, the date it occurred, the problems which it arose. Now the beauty with this exception report is the bottom half of the page you'll notice says the solution implemented. So you're teaching your people to think like you. Really simple. And sooner or later, they do start to think like you, and they stop saying, hey, you got a minute, you got a minute, you got a guy shortly into this, moved out of the Remax office, and I moved home to my home office, which is where I'm calling from today. It was the best move ever because people could knock on the door and say, Craig, you got a minute. I forced my people to teach, uh, to think like me. I just included this for fun. Uh, town of Newmarket, 50,000 people. I was selling five to 600 homes a year. A lot of you complain about, well, my marketplace is too small. Uh, there's my first office. What's that? Maybe five feet wide by 12 feet long. That's where it all started. So, probably have some questions, and we're running out of time. But I hope you've enjoyed our webinar here today. Uh, let's go back to Andrea, and we'll take a few questions. Yes, sir, and if you haven't done so already, you can type your question in the chat box or click the hand icon if you have a working mic or on the telephone. Our first guest is Vic McCarrion. Your line is now open. Yeah, hey, Craig. Vic here, how are you? I have a few questions, please. One of them, if we give a disk test and uh, the person for OSA comes with high S or high C, should we interview them? Uh, what position are you recruiting for? For an uh, outside sales agent, buyer's agent. Probably wouldn't be the best fit, right? That's true. That's true. So, so the benefit of sending the test in advance is you can screen out prospects. And uh, if I'm hiring an administrative person, uh, somebody that, to do detailed work, I want the S or C. But if I want an inside sales agent or an outside sales agent, I probably want someone with higher I or D. You see, it doesn't matter what personality type you are, you can hire the right people around you. For example, Vic, what personality type are you? Uh, I'm S. Okay, so you could delegate the buyers and sellers to agents that are strong with D or I, and being an S personality, you could do a much job focusing on running the business, the details, and the systems, plus Let's face it, that's what you really like to do anyway. Yes. Yes. So that's... it doesn't matter. Like, think about this. Think of this as a baseball team. And if you're a really good pitcher, but I say, hey, Vic, you're not going to pitch today. I want you to be the back catcher. 
you may not be as good in that position, nor may you be as good on first base, but you're a hell of a pitcher. So the idea here is let's put all the players in the right position. You know, um, quite often what's happened, Vic, is agents will come through the coaching program or to the super conference and they'll say, you know, I've got an assistant. I've got two assistants, they'll say. And one's a buyer agent and one's an administrative person. I gave them the test, and what I found out was the buyer agent should be the administrator, and the administrator should be the buyer agent. They had the right people, but just in the wrong positions. Cool. All right, Vic, we better move on. I hope that helped out. Yes, how about the power presentation? I have a question. Where, where is this power presentation, please, the one you just showed? Uh, it's on my desktop here, see? It's right there. I know what you're getting at. I'm being smart. You want it, right? Um, I, I don't have that available, but everything, uh, Vic, you're going to find is on the coaching side here. Okay, everything you need is right here. This was uh, this this was a crutch for me. This PowerPoint. Okay, this is a crutch for me, so I could uh, I could go through everything that I wanted to go through. But everything you need is right here. Okay, so don't worry about that. Worry about that. Our next guest is Aaron Green. His question, Craig mentioned to create a timing or training manual. Is there an example of a training manual in the website or a list of things to discuss in our weekly meetings? Uh, the training manual, hmm, it could be in the team system manual here. It could be there. Um, that's a good question. Uh, check the team system manual. If, if it's not there, I'll have to check my office and see if we've uh, we've got maybe a paperback version of this. Um, the second question was, was yeah, what to discuss during the weekly meetings. Oh well, I would uh, I would uh, discuss as I suggested a minute ago your new listings, your new buyers, and you're going to teach them a different aspect of this system. You're going to talk about, you should be surveying all your clients and you should be reviewing their surveys. See, the idea of sending out a survey is that we might actually want to do something with the information that we glean from the survey. So new listings, new buyers, teach them a different aspect of the system, buyers, seller presentation, universal callback script, deal with your surveys that are coming in, deal with any uh, problems, you might have your lender come in. Um, you know, there's topics here. Um, if you want to, if you want to cheat a bit, here's what you could do. You could take a look at all the topics that I teach you during the coaching program. And one week you could take one topic. The next week you take another topic. And um, by the time you got to the end of it, you could start all over because they wouldn't remember. Let's wrap it up. I uh, we're at about the 90 minute mark. Uh, oh, one more thing I want to share with you guys. Um, that was the. Uh, the contract here. Uh, licensed agent contract. <clears throat> Let's do this before we wrap it up. A couple of important clause, clauses here. Uh, this is really valuable, by the way. This is like, I, I don't know how much money I spent with lawyers to figure this out, but uh, this is really, really good, and it should be the basis of your contract. So standard of performance, I understand that uh, Joe Blow, okay, my name, Craig, standard of performance, and I agree to adhere to the best of my ability at a high level. Um, I understand I will be given minimum performance requirements by Craig Proctor and that my job performance in relationship to these requirements will be reviewed on a weekly basis. Clause two, duties of agent. I understand that my duties as a licensed real estate agent and job function are to be determined by Craig Proctor and that these responsibilities will be reviewed, augmented, or amended by Craig Proctor as necessary. I understand that my attitude, appearance, service, and skills reflect upon Craig Proctor and upon, and therefore, any deficiency of any of the above may result in termination of this agreement. And then, of course, there'll be a Schedule A. I don't know if you've got the Schedule A. We'll go to that in a minute. Compensation. The following compensation schedule, which can be amended at any time during the contract by Craig Proctor within 30 days' notice shall apply. That's on the Schedule A. Okay, clause number four here is important. Let me just pull this up here. Clause number four, very important. Uh, property of Craig Proctor. 
I agree that all leads, prospects, clients, buyers, and sellers contained on Craig Proctor's database, including those who I'm working with, are the property of Craig Proctor. And upon termination of this contract, whether by Craig Proctor or myself, all the leads, prospects, clients, buyers, and sellers will remain with Craig Proctor. In the, in the event that the paragraph is violated or breached, paragraph 11 of this contract will be enforced. Let's go down to number 11, check it out. Liquidated damages, all leads, prospects, and clients are the sole property of Craig Proctor. For any reason this contract is terminated, I agree that the established value of any lead, prospect, or client acquired under this contract for the purposes of liquidated damages are $5,000 per lead. So that certainly discourages people from leaving me and stealing my database because contractually they're agreeing that they do business with any of my buyers and sellers that are in my database once they leave me that each lead is worth $5,000 enforceable contract. Um, database procedures. All new leads, prospects will be cross-referenced on the database management system wherever possible before you commence working with them. We just want to make sure when you've got a team that someone else on the team isn't already working with that buyer or seller. All leads entered in the database management system must be contacted every a minimum of every 90 days. Now, here's the deal. If my team members aren't speaking to these buyers and sellers at least every 90 days, then they don't get paid a commission. And, and this will prevent your team members from everyone in the phone book in your contact management system and then holding you hostage saying, well, now you've got to pay me. Uh, open house tours, we talk about that calendaring of leads. All leads, prospects, and clients are the property of Craig Proctor. If a lead prospect or client is not ready to buy or sell, but there is reasonable expectation that such a decision may be reached within one year, then they're going to enter them. So that was my rule in my office. They're not going to do something within a year. Please don't enter them into the contact management system. Past clients and referrals, I agree to provide Craig Proctor with a list of names um, of my past clients. So the deal is this. If I'm recruiting an agent that's been in real estate for 15 or 20 years, they're going to have a, a client list. So if um, they provide me a list of all their clients, and it has to be reasonable, I'll pay them a 25% referral okay, on anybody on that list. Uh, marketing scripts and databases, uh, it is agreed that all uh, marketing material scripts and correspondence will be provided by Craig Proctor. For, uh, and are the property of Craig Proctor, all databases are not to leave the office or to be copied. Limitation of authority, this is important. When a client is prepared to list and or purchase property, I will use the training and materials, including listing forms provided to me by Craig Proctor to attain the most accurate list price for the longest term. I'll also endeavor to maintain the maximum acceptable commission whenever possible. I agree to refer any client or potential client inquiring about uh, entering into our trade-up guaranteed sale program. I further understand that I do not have the authority to enter into a trade, um, a guaranteed sale program with any client or potential client. I love this last clause here. Um, I understand that if I do not know how to do something or I do not feel comfortable performing a task, I will inform Craig Proctor. All legal, tax, real estate, and financial associated discussions that are outside my comfort level or beyond my level of experience shall be immediately referred to Craig Proctor. So by simply saying, well, I didn't know, not acceptable. If you don't know something, you come to me. As we covered, okay, non-compete clause, very important. Many of you have asked about this. Well, Craig, what if I teach somebody, hire somebody and teach them to be a superstar, and then they, um, uh, they, they steal my business and set up shop across the street? Well, non-compete clauses stand up if they're deemed to be reasonable. So this would not be reasonable. What I could, would, not, would not stand up in court is if you said, well, if um, uh, any of my team members ever leave me, uh, they can't sell real estate anywhere in the world. That would not be a reasonable non-compete clause and would be kicked out. So we have to have a reasonable non-compete clause. So how about this? Agent agrees not to directly or indirectly as a principal, agent, broker, employee, consultant, director, owner of equity interest, or in any capacity, become engaged in the real estate business using in part or in whole the Craig Proctor marketing system. This provision shall be enforceable by injunction or other equitable relief. In the event 
of any um, any provision shall be held invalid or enforceable, the remainder of this paragraph shall continue in full force and effect as such invalid. Now, you could put also a um, a geographical area here within five miles, ten miles. This is where you're going to talk to your lawyer. You're going to make this as tight as you can without making it too restrictive that it's not enforceable. Expenses, uh, basically, I cover all the advertising expenses, but they have to cover um, you know, their cell phone, their license. They have to uh, pay for all their own, um, light, you know, keeping their real estate license valid. Uh, personal computer cost, I cover that. And that's about it. Now, of course, this is going to have a schedule A, B, and C, and so on. But this will give you folks a great head start. Okay, just take this to your lawyer, massage it, make it work for you. Way, way better than starting from scratch. Anyway, we really are out of time now. So I want to thank everybody for being with us here today on our training session on how to recruit, hire, and train. Everyone have a great day and go sell some houses. Take care, and that concludes today's webinar.